me tell you about Ashcroft. It was the uh, weekend before Halloween, 2020. It was cold. It had snowed. Um, it was not your typical late October weather. Uh, and we knew very little about what we were going to experience in Ashcroft, other than we were invited there by a gentleman named John Fair to meet with himself and the mayor and a newspaper editor, Barbara Roden. We met at Slim Jim's Diner, uh, which was great. We really appreciate the hospitality. And we were basically, once we got there, found out we were just going to kind of hear some of the scary stories related to some of the properties and locations in and around Ashcroft, as well as get a little bit of a tour of gold panning locations uh, where people had also been rumored to die. I had one experience. I was down the river about maybe a half, three quarters of a kilometer. And it was, you know, afternoon. It was a sunny summer day. I was panning on some gold. I go down there and I do gold panning and fishing a lot. I didn't have any students for my school at that time. And I something told me to turn and look around behind me. So I turned around to look just a glance. And, and I turned back around again and was working my pan to see if there was any gold in the bottom of it. And, and I turned around and looked again, and what I had seen was gone. But what I saw was I saw a, a, an old guy dressed in a gray jacket, holding a shovel, wearing a, a cowboy style hat. And it, it dawned on me at that time that must be the old prospector everybody's been talking about. Uh, John who uh, was our kind of guide throughout Ashcroft and uh, helping us find various spots where he'd seen or experienced something. Um, and he himself is a very interesting man. They had to deal with these conditions. And if you look at these conditions, the way the rocks are, and trying to climb over these rocks and uh, unthaw areas or soften up areas, so that they could be worked even in sub-zero temperatures because it's the only way they made their money. The only way that they got their grub to eat was to work the river for the gold it had. So a lot of them, or some of them, pardon me, if they got careless and fell in the river, the water is so cold that it'll take your life within minutes. Peter, yep. why don't we try a session here? People have kind of died in the area. <laughs> Is there anyone here with us? Anyone here that wants to say hello to us? Hello. Hello. Right out the gate. What is your name? Can you give us your name? Do you hear that? Hello. I heard hello. Yeah. I 
feeling cold. Yeah, there's, a, there's cold a huge spot. cold spot right around here. Oh my god! <laughs> huge! <laughs> we, we stayed out there as long as we could before the cold kind of overtook us. Uh, and then we wanted to head to the cemetery, but we made a pit stop where John lives. And he kind of relayed to us this story he'd had about seeing a girl in his room, a little girl, a spirit. It's first thing in the morning, I'm, I've got CBC News on. I'm uh, in the bathroom sitting there and listening to the radio, staring straight ahead into the kitchen. And all of a sudden this little girl peeks around the corner and looks at me, kind of smirked on her face and then ran into my bedroom. Uh, when I finished what I was doing and I peeked around the corner and walked into my bedroom, there was nobody there. There's three graves that I go and visit in the graveyard. And two of them are births with um, the death date and birth date are the same date. So I imagine they're stillborn when they were born. And I, I'm the only one that goes to put flowers on these graves because I know they're children. And um, that, it, it, I had the thought in my head that that's one of the little kids that came to visit me is I go to visit their grave. He's convinced that whatever spirit visited him in his apartment was one of the ones that's buried at the cemetery. Of course, when we went, got to the cemetery, John led us to the grave sites uh, where the two children are buried. We wanted to wait until the sun set and we could conduct an EVP session in a cemetery. Is there any young children here that wants to say hello to us? It did kind of sound like your voice. Is there anyone here that wants to say hello to us? What is your name? Can you tell us your name? Was anyone around me then when I got that? I got it. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it too, and I was up was there. It, it was a George. George, George, just like George. George. From the. It was like a. It, it had like a distinctive uh, accent to it. Okay. Like a Canadian. It was George. G George, eh? George. George. Hey, George. George is a uh, prospector. Go over that way. George is a prospector. Yeah, his first name is George. Can you say that name again, please? Is here, George. Who else can give us their names? I love this. I can shout. I mean, yeah, no, good. <laughs> <laughs> ole, ole. <laughs> That's George. George. No, 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 George, do I have a George Novak here? Hi, George. George, would you like us to leave? Is that why you're not talking to us? Who's <laughs> that? I'm sorry, um, Japanese. Chinese? Interesting. Chinese brains all around us right now. It was, like, it was really fast. Yeah. They're all around us, eh, John? Yeah. George is out here on his own, but the other graves around George are all mostly Chinese. Okay. 
Is there any Chinese that would like to say something else in Chinese? <laughs> what was that? I don't know, but... It sounded Chinese. Yeah. yeah. I've never done one in a cemetery before. I've always wanted to. It seems if you're going to be a paranormal investigator, you gotta, you gotta do it. You gotta have an EVP session in this cemetery, a cemetery, anywhere. And so that's what we did to kind of cap off our tour. Um, and it was interesting because we did the session. We started where the two kids are buried, and we were picking up voices that definitely didn't sound English. Um, it sounded actually Asian. Uh, which was in line with the many of the people who had died at that cemetery um, and in a nearby Chinese cemetery as well. Um, and then we sort of did a walkabout as well and and picked up an EVP of another George, not not George Sampson, but a different George. And we actually, after the fact, John found a gravesite. We found during the investigation a gravesite belonging to a George. John found it, which I thought was interesting. But man, it was cold. It, it, I've never been, I've only been out in the cold that kind of cold once. It was colder uh, to a previous trip that um, Peter and I made to Ashcroft, but this was still cold. Our gear started to fail. Uh, the cold was playing havoc with it. My gimbal died. Um, Marcus's camera battery was drained. Uh, I don't think anything paranormal to do with either of that. I think it was just that freaking cold out that we had to switch to basically to our phone cameras to complete our, our uh, investigation at the cemetery. But it was an interesting trip. And, and the nice thing about it is that uh, through Barbara and John, we've made other connections in Ashcroft that uh, will be of value. The museum, um, the gal Tammy that runs Slim Jim's Diner has hauntings there. So we're definitely gonna be going back to the village of Ashcroft in order to conduct further investigation. So it was, a, it was an impromptu outing. We didn't know what to expect going in. It was very fruitful in terms of some of the evidence that we found, the experiences that we had, and the connections that we made, and I definitely look forward to going back.